Hey there, movie buffs. Today, we're diving into the world of one of the greatest actors of all time, Robert De Niro. From his iconic roles in gangster films to heartwarming comedies, De Niro has done it all. So, grab some popcorn and get ready as we count down the top 10 Robert De Niro movies of all time. Starting off our list at number 10 is The Irishman. The longest of all the collaborations between Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro, The Irishman is an epic that shows both still have it in them to make excellent crime movies. It was also the first feature film they'd worked on together since 1995's Casino, and the nearly 25-year long wait ended up being worth it. De Niro stars as an aging hitman named Frank Sheeran, with the film being largely comprised of flashbacks to the death-filled and alienated life he lived, with his various actions in his younger days continuing to haunt him in old age. Like Heat, it also stars Al Pacino, Joe Pesci is here too, stealing scenes as always, and is a phenomenally well-acted slow burn of a movie, expertly building to one of the most devastating and memorable final acts in recent memory. Yes, sir. Local 107, since 1947. Yeah, you know, uh, our friend speaks very highly of you. Coming in at number nine is Casino. Casino was the last collaboration between Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese for close to a quarter of a century. At one point in time standing as an impressive end to the string of films they made together. It's a dark and very violent look at how the mob ran Las Vegas during the 1970s, considering gangsters controlled the city's numerous lucrative casinos. It's not quite the greatest crime movie the two cinematic legends made together, but it has a ton to offer with a fast-paced epic narrative, plenty of stylish and memorable images, and great performances from the likes of De Niro, Sharon Stone, and Joe Pesci, to name a few. It's a long and sometimes challenging film, but still stands as an essential 1990s gangster movie. I don't give a shit who he's connected to. Tell him to take his fucking feet off the table. What's he think this is a goddamn sawdust joint? At number eight, we have Once Upon a Time in America. Once Upon a Time in America is one of the longest crime movies of all time, at 229 minutes and also happens to be one of the greatest crime movies of all time. It spans decades, following a group of young boys who grow up together and eventually form a lucrative criminal gang, but then find themselves torn apart by jealousy and greed. Robert De Niro portrays the main character, Noodles, both as a young adult and then decades later as an old, regret-filled man. He and the other characters do some despicable things, making Once Upon a Time in America a brutal and challenging film that nevertheless has the feel of an operatic and epic tragedy, all directed to perfection by Sergio Leone. It was sadly the great director's last film, with the masterful score composed by the inimitable Ennio Morricone. Frankie Minaldi is as big as they come. He's got the combination in the palm of his hand. If we're not careful, he's going to have us in the palm of his hand. Next up at number seven, we have The Deer Hunter. When it comes to ranking the greatest and most acclaimed war movies of all time, The Deer Hunter will frequently be considered up there among the very best. A three-hour movie distinctly split into three acts, it follows a group of men before, during, and after they serve in the Vietnam War. It contrasts their lives before and after fighting overseas to devastating effect, with the relatively brief Vietnam set scenes being uncompromising in their approach to depicting the horrors of warfare. It's a tragic and difficult movie to watch but contains phenomenal performances from Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, and Christopher Walken, with Walken winning an Academy Award for his performance. Stanley, see this? This is this. This ain't something else. This is this. From now on, you're on your own. Coming in at number six is The King of Comedy. Despite the title containing the word comedy, it's hard to define the king of comedy as one. 
unless you happen to like your humor very dark and extremely uncomfortable. It's a tense film where De Niro stars as a man who is desperate for fame and will go to great lengths to impress and replicate the successes of his idol, a talk show host played by Jerry Lewis. It was also directed by Martin Scorsese and ends up being one of his most surprisingly dark and twisted movies. De Niro's commitment to the lead role is scarily good, and the film offers a persistently queasy and uncompromising watch for those brave enough to handle some very, intentionally, awkward sequences. And what I'm thinking as I'm sitting here now, well, maybe this is my big break, this is my big chance, you know what I mean? You don't just walk on to a network show without experience. At number five, we have Heat. Two actors as beloved as Robert De Niro and Al Pacino appearing in the same movie is always going to be an exciting prospect, which leads to high expectations. Heat's a movie starring the two that ultimately lives up to the hype, seeing the former playing a calm, collected, and skilled bank robber, and the latter playing a hot-headed and very intense police detective on his trail. The two great actors get a legendary one-on-one -on -one scene in a diner, where their two characters discuss their different outlooks on life and respective professions. Shortly before another great scene plays out, a large-scale bank heist that turns into a massive shootout on the streets. Even with just these two scenes, Heat would be a classic, but just about everything else in this nearly three-hour movie also happens to be very compelling making it an outstanding film from director Michael Mann. Now, if you're around me and you got to move when I move, how do you expect to keep a, a marriage? Next up at number four is The Godfather 2. While Raging Bull got Robert De Niro his second Oscar, his supporting role in The Godfather, part two was what got him his first. It's widely held up as one of the best sequels of all time but it also functions as a prequel for a large chunk of its runtime, with De Niro portraying Vito Corleone, played by Marlon Brando in the first movie, during his youth, in a series of flashbacks. Outside the De Niro scenes, the parts of the movie focusing on Al Pacino's Michael Corleone are also incredibly compelling, taking the saga to darker and more intense places than it had gone in the original 1972 film. Given both characters are separated by decades, De Niro and Pacino, unfortunately, don't get to act together here, but at least they would later down the line in films like Heat and The Irishman. <laughs> Coming in at number three is Goodfellas. When it comes to assessing crime movies, Robert De Niro movies, Martin Scorsese movies, or maybe even just movies in general. Next to nothing can touch Goodfellas. It stars Ray Liotta as Henry Hill, a man who had aspirations of being a gangster from a young age, and who narrates quite transparently to the audience his experience living life as a mobster, detailing both the highs and lows of such a lifestyle. About a decade before becoming Tony Soprano's therapist, Lorraine Bracco shines as Hill's wife, Karen, while Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci also excel in their roles as brutal gangsters, the latter winning a well-deserved Oscar for his terrifying performance. Goodfellas has got everything a gangster film could need, and more than 30 years on from release, it still stands as the highlight both of Scorsese's work as a director and of De Niro's acting career. Oh, oh wait, Henry, Henry, his arm. Very funny, guys. Uh, here's a leg. Oh. Here's a wing. <laughs> At number two, we have Taxi Driver. Three years on from Mean Streets, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro reteamed and returned with a vengeance, making another gritty drama set in New York City. That film was Taxi Driver, one of the decade's most important and greatest movies, centering on a war veteran grappling with insomnia and taking up a job as a late-night cab driver to pass the time. De Niro eerily portrays a disturbed man losing his grip on reality and becoming progressively more angered by the world around him. 
eventually lashing out violently against it. Taxi drivers among the most intense character studies of all time and is an overall haunting and unforgettable movie, and would likely stand as the best Scorsese and De Niro movie were it not for another collaboration of theirs that came out in 1990. You talking to me? You talking to me? And finally, coming in at number one is Raging Bull. Robert De Niro won his second Oscar for his lead role in Raging Bull, a film directed by Martin Scorsese that would have to be one of the most intense sports movies of all time. It centers on a boxer named Jake LaMotta, depicting in unflinching detail how his anger helped him in his line of work, but inevitably ruined his life outside the ring. It's memorably shot in black and white, fitting the look of old televised boxing matches, while also visually adding to the film's sense of hopelessness and darkness. It's not an easy film to watch, but it's an amazing one nonetheless and easily contains one of De Niro's best ever performances. It also might be the movie of his where he did the most full-on method acting. I'm not telling you just to do it, I'm telling you, you gotta do it. Hey, 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 you're a little brother, Joey. And there you have it, folks, the top 10 Robert De Niro movies of all time. Whether you're a fan of crime dramas, comedies, or heartfelt dramas, there's something for everyone in De Niro's impressive filmography. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and enjoy the cinematic brilliance of one of the greatest actors of our time. Thanks for watching.